Ah, squelch. It's a beautiful thing. Without it, we'd be driven mad by constant radio static or traffic we just don't want to hear. But what is squelch, and why is it important to know about it if you're using a radio? If you were to look it up, you'd find that squelch is a circuit function that acts to suppress the audio output of a receiver. Okay, but what's that mean? You see, there's always some background radio noise going on, some caused by the radio itself, but most of it caused by man-made devices producing RF noise, which is picked up by your antenna, which is picked up in your radio and what you hear. You can see this noise when you're using an SDR to visualize the radio spectrum. Squelch is used to tune out the noise. It basically tells the radio to ignore anything below a certain signal strength. Check it out. With no squelch, all we hear is noise. Nothing's being ignored, and signals of every strength are allowed through to the speaker. When I increase the squelch, we tune out the noise. Basically, we're telling the radio to ignore any signal below this imaginary line. Or, in other words, ignore all signals weaker than this threshold, and only allow signals stronger than this threshold to come through. If a radio transmission is strong enough, it'll break the squelch and be allowed to come through as audio. Let's see what happens, for example, when I transmit on this frequency with the squelch set just above the noise floor to tune out all the static. WRJ E548, testing channel 3. WRJ E548, clear. You see, the signal was nice and strong and above the squelch level that we set, so it came through for us to hear. Now, it's possible to set your squelch too high. Let's say you get overzealous in your desire to tune out all the noise, and you turn the squelch all the way up. This can be especially detrimental if you're trying to use a scanner. You see, when you're scanning, a radio is going to be going through all the different frequencies and looking for a signal that's relevant. And what's defined as relevant is how you have the squelch set. So for example, if your squelch is set too low and you're constantly picking up static, the scanner is not going to know what to show to you as far as relevant. It's picking up a signal everywhere along the spectrum. If your squelch is set too high, then no matter the signal strength, it's not going to stop when it's scanning through the channels because it's not breaking that threshold. So as a general rule of thumb, we want to set the squelch just high enough to tune out the noise, but low enough to still let legitimate signals through, even the weak ones. That's squelch in a nutshell, but there's actually other uses of squelch too. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to cover three basic types of squelch. Signal strength squelch, tone squelch, and digital squelch. Signal strength squelch is what we just covered. Tone and digital squelch is what you've probably seen marketed as privacy tones, privacy codes in the FRS and GMRS market, or as required repeater inputs, tones and codes whenever you're trying to access a repeater in both the GMRS and amateur radio community. Tone squelch, or what you'll commonly see as CTCSS, continuous tone coded squelch system, is an analog form of squelch where your radio listens for a low frequency tone in a transmission. If that tone is not present, it will not allow the signal to pass through to the speaker. It's kind of like if you were to tune out anyone talking that did not talk with a continuous tone in the background. Hey dude, you want some pizza? Dude, I'm gonna go get some freaking Papa John's. What do you want? Hey dude, do you want some pizza? Yeah, that sounds pretty good. What do you want on it? I'll take uh, pepperoni and green pepper. All right, give me like 20 minutes. Thanks, man. The difference in radios is that the tone is a sub-audible tone. You don't hear it. It's outside of the range of the normal human ear. Here's an example of where you'll find this setting on a few radios. My Radiodity GMRS radio has it in its settings here. Midland misleadingly calls these things privacy codes, and they still refer to the same sub-audible tone frequencies, but just use a channel-like system for simplicity. On my Yaesu FT70HT, I use various CTCSS tones to communicate with local repeaters. Digital squelch, or what you'll commonly see as DCS, digital coded squelch, does the same thing as a tone squelch, but uses a digital bitstream instead of an audio subtone. Radios will ignore signals that do not include a bitstream with a specific code. Using the same radios, you'll find DCS options under similar menu settings. Because they're digital, there are many more code options than there are CTCSS tones. Though, in my experience, they seem to be less commonly used. So as I hope you've learned, understanding squelch not only helps you avoid hearing static, it's also important to understanding how to tune out unwanted transmissions using tones or digital codes easily configured in any of your radios. If you'd like a more detailed explanation on how these things actually work, I recommend this video by Rhoda Schwartz. Also, if you have a pair of radios, there's no better teacher than just tinkering and experimenting. Try entering a tone on one radio and no tone or a different tone on another one and see what happens. I hope this helped you better understand Squelch and the role it plays in your communications. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. And as always, feel free to share your questions or feedback in the comments below. Thanks as always for watching, and until the next time, this is Tom the Dilettante saying keep on tinkering and keep on learning. Have a good one.